Chapter 11, Castle Rock. Keep in consideration as we're reading the um, symbol of Piggy's glasses, his specs, right? What that symbolizes. Also keep in mind the symbol of the conch. In the short chill of dawn, the four boys gathered round the black smudge where the fire had been while Ralph knelt in blue. Gray, feathery ashes scurried hither and hither as at his breath, but no spark shone among them. The twins watched anxiously, and Piggy sat expressionless behind the luminous wall of his myopia. Myopia is someone who's nearsighted. Remember, Piggy doesn't have his glasses. Ralph continued to blow till his ears were singing with the effort, but then the first breeze of dawn took the job off his hands and blinded him with ashes. He squatted back, swore, and rubbed water out of his eyes. No use. Eric looked down at him through a mask of dried blood. Piggy peered in the general direction of Ralph. Course it's no use, Ralph. Now we got no fire. Ralph brought his face within a couple of feet of Piggy's. Can you see me? A bit. Ralph allowed the swollen flap of his cheek to close his eye again. They've got our fire. Rage shrilled in his voice. They stole it. That's them, said Piggy. They blinded me. See, that's Jack Meridu. You call an assembly, Ralph. We got to decide what to do. An assembly for only us? It's all we got. Sam, let me hold on to you. They went toward the platform. Blow the conch, said Piggy. Blow as loud as you can. The forest re-echoed and birds lifted, crying out of the treetops as on that first morning ages ago. Both ways the beach was deserted. Some little ones came from the shelters. Ralph sat down on the polished trunk and the three others stood before him. He nodded and Sam and Eric sat down on the right. Ralph pushed the conch into Piggy's hands. He held the shining thing carefully and blinked at Ralph. Go on then. I just take the conch to say this. I can't see no more. And I got n- and I got to get my glasses back. Awful things has been done on this island. I voted for you for chief. He's the only one who ever got anything done. So now you speak, Ralph, and tell us what or else. Piggy broke off, sniffling. Ralph took back the conch as he sat down. Just an ordinary fire. You'd think we could do that, wouldn't you? Just a smoke signal so we can be rescued. Are we savages or what? Only now, there's no signal going up. Ships may be passing. Do you remember how we went hunting and the fire went out and that ship passed by? And they all think he's best as chief. Then there was, then there was, that's his fault too. If it hadn't been for him, it would have never happened. Now Piggy can't see, and they came stealing, Ralph's voice ran up, at night in the darkness and stole our fire. They stole it. We'd been given them, we'd have given them the fire if they'd asked, but they stole it and the signal's out and we can never be rescued. Don't you see what I mean? We have given them the fire for themselves, only they stole it. I. He paused lamely as the curtain flickered in his brain. Piggy held out his hands for the couch. What are you going to do, Ralph? This is just talk without deciding. I want my glasses. I'm trying to think. Supposing we go, looking like we used to, washed and hairbrushed. After all, we aren't savages, really, and being rescued isn't a game. He opened the flap of his cheek and looked at the twins. We could smarten up a bit and then go. We ought to take spears, said Sam, even Piggy. Because we may need them. You haven't got the conch. Piggy held up the shell. You can take spears if you want to, but I shan't. What's the good? All I have have to do be led like a dog anyhow. Yes, laugh. Go on, laugh. There's them on the island as would laugh at anything. And what happened? What's grown-ups going to think? Young Simon was murdered. And there was that other kid. What they had a mark on his face. Who's seen him since we first come here? Piggy, stop a minute. I got the conch. I'm going to that Jack Meridu and I'm going to tell him I am. You'll get hurt. What can he do more than he has? 
I'll tell him what's what. You let me carry the contraft. I'll show him the one thing he hasn't got. Piggy paused for a moment and peered round at the dim figures. The shape of the old assembly trodden in the grass listened to him. I'm going to him with this conch in my hands. I'm going to hold it out. Look, I'm going to say you're stronger than I am and you haven't got asthma. You can see and I'm going to say and with both eyes. But I don't ask for my glasses back, not as a favor. I don't ask you to be a sport, I'll say. Not because you're strong, but because what's right's right. Give me my glasses. I'm going to say you got to. Piggy ended, flushed and trembling. He pushed the conch quickly into Ralph's hands as though in a hurry to be rid of it and wiped the tears from his eyes. The green light was gentle about him and the conch lay at Ralph's feet, fragile and white. A single drop of water that had escaped Piggy's fingers now flashed on the delicate curve like a star. At last, Ralph sat up, up straight and drew back his hair. All right. I mean, you can try if you like. We'll go with you. He'll be painted, said Sam timidly. You know how he'll be. So one of the questions you might consider is, why are these boys concerned with their appearances and trying to look smart, meaning trying to look cleaned up? And then compare and contrast that with how the other group of boys is painted, right? Kind of think of our oppositions we've talked about along the way. And I believe we've talked about appearances, but just kind of notice that in this chapter as well. He won't think much of us. If we get waxy, we've had it. Ralph scowled at Sam. Dimly, he remembered something Simon had told him once by the rocks. Don't be silly, he said. And then he added quickly, let's go. He held out the conch to Piggy, who flushed, this time with pride. You must carry it. When we're ready, I'll carry it. Piggy sought in his mind for words to convey his passionate willingness to carry the conch against all odds. I don't mind. I'll be glad, Ralph. Only I'll have to be the lead. Ralph put the conch back on the shining log. We better eat and then get ready. They made their way to the devastated fruit trees. Piggy was helped to his food and found some by touch. While they ate, Ralph thought of the afternoon. We'll be like we were. We'll wash. Sam gulped down a mouthful and protested, but we bathe every day. Ralph looked at the filthy objects before him and sighed. We ought to comb our hair, only it's too long. I've got both socks left in the shelter, said Eric, so we could pull them over our heads like caps, sort of. We could find some stuff, said Piggy, and tie our hair back, like a girl. No, of course not. Then we must go as we are, said Ralph, and they won't be any better. Eric made a detaining gesture, but they'll be painted. You know how it is. The others nodded. They understood only too well the liberation into savagery that the concealing paint brought. Well, we won't be painted, said Ralph, because we aren't savages. Sam and Eric looked at each other all the same liberation how think about that how is the face paint a form of liberation or freedom it's a fascinating question to think about and thinking about it and what golding is saying ralph shouted no paint he tried to remember smoke he said we want smoke he turned on the twins fiercely i said smoke we've got to have smoke there was silence, except for the multitudinous murmur of the bees. At last, Piggy spoke kindly. Of course we have, because the smoke's a signal, and we can't be rescued if we don't have smoke. I knew that, shouted Ralph. He pulled his arm away from Piggy. Are you suggesting? I'm just saying what you always say, said Piggy hastily. I thought for a moment I hadn't, said Ralph loudly. I knew it all the time. I hadn't forgotten. Piggy nodded propitiously. You're chief, Ralph. You remember everything. I hadn't forgotten. Of course not. The twins were examining Ralph curiously, as though they were seeing him for the first time. They set off along the beach in formation. Ralph went first, limping a little, his spear carried over one shoulder. 
He saw things partially through the tremble of the heat haze and the flashing sands and his own long hair and injuries. Behind him came the twins, worried now for a while, but full of unquenchable vitality. They said little, but trailed the butts of their wooden spears, for Piggy had found that by looking down and shielding his tired sight from the sun, he could just see these moving along the sand. He walked between the trailing butts, therefore, the conch held carefully between his two hands. The boys made a compact little group that moved over the beach, four plate-like shadows dancing and mingling beneath them. There was no sign left of the storm, and the beach was swept clean like a blade that had been scoured. The sky and the mountain were at an immense distance, shimmering in the heat, and the reef was lifted by mirage, floating in a kind of silver pool halfway up the sky. They passed the place where the tribe had danced. The charred sticks still lay on the rocks where the rain had quenched them, but the sand by the water was smooth again. They passed this in silence. No one doubted that the tribe would be found at the castle rock, and when they came in sight of it, they stopped with one accord. The densest tangle on the island, a mass of twisted stems, black and green and impenetrable, lay on their left, and tall grass swayed before them. Now Ralph went forward. Here was the crushed grass where they had all lain when he had gone to prospect. There was the neck of the island, the ledge skirting the rock, up there, the red pinnacles. Sam touched his arm. Smoke! There was a tiny smudge of smoke wavering into the air on the other side of the rock. Some fire, I don't think. Ralph turned. What are we hiding for? He stepped through the screen of grass onto the little open space that led to the narrow neck. You two follow behind. I'll go first, then Piggy a pace behind me. Keep your spears ready. Piggy peered anxiously into the luminous veil that hung between him and the world. Is it safe? Ain't there a cliff? I can hear the sea. You keep right close to me. Ralph moved forward on the, de on the neck. He kicked some stone and bound it into the water. Then the sea sucked down, revealing a red, weedy square 40 feet beneath Ralph's left arm. Am I safe? quivered Piggy. I feel awful. High above them, from the pinnacles, came a sudden shout, and then an imitation war cry that was answered by a dozen voices from behind the rock. Give me the conch and stay still. Halt! Who goes there? Ralph bent back his head and glimpsed Roger's dark face at the top. You can see who I am, he shouted. Stop being silly. He put the conch to his lips and began to blow. Savages appeared painted out of recognition edging round the ledge toward the neck they carried spears and disposed themselves to defend the entrance ralph went on blowing and ignored piggy's terrors roger was shouting you mind out see at length ralph took his lips away and paused to get his breath back his first words were a gasp but audible calling an assembly the savages guarding the neck muttered among themselves but made no motion. Ralph walked forward a couple of steps. A voice whispered urgently behind him, Don't leave me, Ralph. You kneel down, said Ralph sideways, and wait till I come back. He stood halfway along the neck and gazed at the savages intently. Freed by the paint, they had tried their hair, tied their hair back and were more comfortable than he was. Ralph made a resolution to tie his own back afterward. Indeed, he felt like telling them to wait and doing it there and then, but that was impossible. The savages sniggered a bit, and one gestured at Ralph with his spear. High above, Roger took his hands off the lever and leaned out to see what was going on. The boys on the neck stood in the pool of their own shadow, diminished to shaggy heads. Piggy crouched, his back shapeless as a sack. I'm calling an assembly. Silence. Roger took up a small stone and flung it between the twins, aiming to miss. They started, and Sam only just kept his footing. Some source of power began to pulse in Roger's body. Ralph spoke again loudly. I'm calling an assembly. He ran his eye over them. 
Where's Jack? The group of boys stirred and consulted. A painted face spoke with the voice of Robert. He's hunting, and he said we weren't to let you in. I've come to see about the fire, said Jack, and about Piggy Specks. The group in front of him shifted and laughter shivered outward from, the, from among them. Light, excited laughter that went echoing among the tall rocks. A voice spoke from behind Ralph. What do you want? The twins made a bolt past Ralph and got between him and the entry. He turned quickly. Jack, identifiable by personality and red hair, was advancing from the forest. A hunter crouched on either side. All three were masked in black and green. Behind them on the grass, the headless and paunch boy body of a sow lay there, had dropped it. Piggy wailed, Ralph, don't leave me. With ludicrous care, he embraced the rock, pressing himself to it above the sucking sea. The sniggering of the savages became a loud, derisive jeer. Jack shouted above the noise, You go away, Ralph. You keep to your end. This is my end and my tribe. You leave me alone. The jeering died away. You pinched Peggy's specks, said Ralph breathlessly. You've got to give them back. Got to? Who says? Ralph's temper blazed about. I say, you voted for me for chief. Didn't you hear the conch? You played a dirty trick. We'd have given you the fire if you'd asked for it. The blood was flowing in his cheeks, and he bunged up, eye throbbed. You could have had fire whenever you wanted, but you didn't. You came sneaking up like a thief and stole Piggy's glasses. Say that again. Thief, thief, Piggy screamed. Ralph, mind me. Jack made a rush and stabbed at Ralph's chest with his spear. Ralph sensed the position of the weapon from the glimpse he caught of Jack's arm and th- and the thrust aside with his own butt. Then he brought the end round and caught Jack, a stinger across the ear. They were chest to chest, breathing fiercely, pushing and glaring. Who's a thief? You are! Jack wrenched free and swung at Ralph with his spear. By common consent, they were using the spears as sabers now, no longer daring the lethal points. The blow struck Ralph's spear and slid down to fall agonizingly on his fingers. Then they were apart once more, their positions reversed, Jack toward the castle rock and Ralph on the outside toward the island. Both boys were breathing very heavily. Come on then, come on! Chunkingly, they squared up onto each other, but kept just out of fighting distance. You come on and see what you get. You come on. Piggy, clutching the ground, was trying to attract Ralph's attention. Ralph moved, bent down, kept a wary eye on Jack. Ralph, remember what we've come here for. The fire, my specs. Ralph nodded. He relaxed his fighting muscles, stood easily, and grounded the butt of his spear. Jack watched him inscrutably through his paint. Ralph glanced up at the pinnacles, then toward the group of savages. Listen, we've come to say this. First, you've got to give back piggy specks. If he hasn't got them, he can't see. You aren't playing the game. The tribe of painted savages giggled, and Ralph's mind faltered. He pushed his hair up and gazed at the green and black mask before him, trying to remember what Jack looked like. Piggy whispered, And the fire! Oh, yes. Then about the fire, I say this again. I've been saying it ever since we dropped in. He held out a spear and pointed at the savages. Your only hope is keeping a signal fire going as long as there's light to see. Then maybe a ship will notice the smoke and come and rescue us and take us home. But without that smoke, we've got to wait till some ship comes by accident. We might wait years till we're old. The shivering, silvery, unreal laughter of the savages sprayed out and echoed away. A gust of rage shook Ralph. His voice cracked. Don't you understand? You painted fools. Sam, Eric, Piggy, and me, we aren't enough. We tried to keep the fire going, but we couldn't. And then you playing a hunting. He pointed past them to where the trickle of smoke dispersed at the pearly air. Look at that. Call that a signal fire? That's a cooking fire. Now you'll eat and then there'll be no smoke. Don't you understand? There may be a ship out there. He paused, defeated by the silence and the painted anonymity of the group guarding the entry. Jack opened a pink mouth and addressed Sam and Eric, who were between him and his tribe. You too, get back. 
No one answered him. The twins, puzzled, looked at each other while Piggy, reassured by the cessation of violence, stood up carefully. Jack glanced back at Ralph and then at the twins. Grab them. No one moved. Jack shouted angrily, I said, grab them. The painted group moved round Sam and Eric nervously and unhandily. Once more, the silvery laughter scattered. Sam and Eric protested out of the heart of civilization. Oh, I say. Honestly, their spears were taken from them. Tie them up. Ralph cried out hopelessly against the black and green mask. Jack, go on, tie them. Now the painted group felt the otherness of Sam and Eric felt the power in their own hands. They felled the twins clumsily and excitedly. Jack was inspired. He knew that Ralph would attempt a rescue. He struck in a humming circle behind them, behind him, and Ralph only just par- parried the blow. Beyond them, the tribe and the twins were a loud and writhing heap. Piggy crouched again. Then the twins lay, astonished, and the tribe stood round them. Jack turned to Ralph, and spoke between his teeth. See? They do what I want. There was silence again. The twins lay inexpertly tied up, inexpertly tied up, and the tribe watched Ralph to see what he would do. He numbered them through his fringe, glimpsed the ineffectual smoke. His temper broke. He screamed at Jack, You're a beast! and a swine, and a bloody, bloody thief. He charged. Jack, knowing this was the crisis, charged too. They met with a jolt and bounced apart. Jack swung with his fist at Ralph and caught him on on the ear. Ralph hit Jack in the stomach and made him grunt. Then they were facing each other again, panting and furious, but unnerved by each other's ferocity. They became aware of the noise that was the background to his fight, and the and the steadily, the steady shrill cheering of the tribe behind them. Piggy's voice penetrated to Ralph. Let me speak. He was standing in the dust of the fight, and as the tribe saw his intention, the shrill cheer changed to a steady booing. Piggy held up the conch, and the booing sagged a little, then came up again to strength. I got the conch, he shouted. I tell you, I got the conch. Surprisingly, there was silence now. The tribe were curious to hear what amusing thing he might have to say. Silence and pause. But in the silence, a curious air noise close by Ralph's head. He gave it half his attention, and there it was again. A faint zip. Someone was throwing stones. Roger was dropping them, his one hand still on the lever. Below him, Ralph was a shock of hair and Piggy a bag of fat. I got this to say. You're acting like a crowd of kids. The booing rose and died again as Piggy lifted the white magic shell. Which is better, to be a pack of painted Indians like you are or to be sensible like Ralph is? A great clamor rose among the savages. Piggy shouted again. Which is better, to have rules and agree, or to hunt and kill? Again, the clamor, and again, zip. So these are the big questions, right? Is it better to be a savage? Is it better to have rules, right? This is what Golding's trying to make us think. Ralph shouted against the noise. Which is better, law and rescue or hunting and breaking things up? Now Jack was yelling too, and Ralph could no longer make himself heard. Jack had backed right against the tribe, and they were a solid mass of menace that bristled with spears. The intention of a charge was forming among them. They were working to it, and the neck uh, be swept. Ralph stood facing them a little to one side, his body, his spear ready. By him stood Piggy, still holding out the talisman, the fragile, shining beauty of the shell. The storm of a sound beat at them, the incantation of hatred. High overhead, Roger, with a sense of delirious abandonment, leaned all his weight on the lever. Ralph heard the great rock before he saw it. He was aware of a jolt in the earth that came to him through the soles of his feet. 
and the breaking sound of stones at the top of the cliff. Then the monstrous red thing bounded across the neck, and he flung himself flat while the tribe shrieked. Big, big moment here, guys. Ready? Big moment. The rock struck Piggy, a glancing blow from chin to knee. The conch exploded into a thousand white fragments and ceased to exist. Piggy, saying nothing, with no time for even a grunt, traveled through the air sideways from the rock, turning over as he went. The rock bounded twice and he, lo- he was lost in the forest. Piggy fell 40 feet and landed on his back across the square red rock in the sea. His head opened and stuff came out and turned red. Piggy's arms and legs twitched a bit like a pig's after it had been killed. Then the sea breathed again in a long, slow sigh. The water boiled white and pink over the rock, and when it went sucking back again, the body of Piggy was gone. This time the silence was complete. Ralph's lips formed a word, but no sound came. Suddenly, Jack bounded out from the tribe and began screaming wildly, See, see, that's what you'll get. I meant that. There isn't a tribe for you anymore. The conch is gone. He ran forward, stooping, I'm chief. Viciously, with full intention, he hurled his spear at Ralph. The point tore the skin and flesh over Ralph's ribs, then sheared off and fell in the water. Ralph stumbled, feeling not pain but panic, and the tribe, screaming now like the like the chief, began to advance. Another spear, a bent one that would not fly straight, went past his face, and one fell from high where Roger was. The twins lay hidden behind the tribe, and the anonymous devil's faces swarmed across the, their neck. Ralph turned and ran. A great noise, as of the seagulls, rose behind him. He obeyed an instinct that he could not know he possessed, and he swerved over the open space so that the spears went wide. He saw the headless body of the sow and jumped in time. Then he was crashing through foliage and small boughs and was hidden by the forest. The chief stopped by the pig, turned, and held up his hands. Back! Back to the fort. Presently, the tribe returned noisily to the neck where Roger joined them. The chief spoke to him angrily. Why aren't you on watch? Roger looked at him gravely. I just came down. The hangman's horror clung round him. The chief said no more to him, but looked down at Sam and Eric. You got to go join the tribe. You let me go. And me. The chief snatched one of the few spears that were left and poked Sam in the ribs. What do you mean... What do you mean by it, eh? said the chief fiercely. What do you mean by coming with spears? What do you mean by not joining my tribe? The prodding became rhythmic. Sam yelled, That's not the way! Roger edged past the chief, only just avoiding pushing him with his shoulder. The yelling ceased, and Sam and Eric lay looking up in quiet terror. Roger advanced upon them as one wielding a nameless authority.